We're gonna have a little bit of fun today. I'm gonna to show you how to add an IP camera such as this little guy to your team's meetings. This uh, method will apply to many different cameras and I go through step by step and show you exactly how to do it. I will point out though that this is not a supported way, but it's that time of the year, time for a little bit of fun. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. I'm Paul Bloom and you're watching In My Humble Opinion. Okay, so I've downloaded both applications. The one is the OnVIF device manager and the other is split cam. Do make sure you, if you're running the 64-bit version of uh, Windows that you're installing the 64-bit version. I had lots of trouble if, when I didn't. Um, and while that's installing, bear in mind also that when you install split cam, make sure you are doing the install in an elevated permissions mode. Otherwise you will also have issues relating to reporting that the Windows version isn't supported. Now, once split cam is installed, it's really, really easy to configure, uh, but we will need to know the string to connect to the camera. So I'm going to show you how to find that really easy, right? Split cam launching on the back. I'll just move this over here. Uh, where is it? There it is. So here, split cam over here. Now, it, it has this idea of scenes, and within the scenes, you can add layers. So what I might just do is I might just delete this default one over here. We'll start from scratch. Before I give it a name, let's just go in here. We've got an IP camera or a webcam. Web camera being USB. I'm going to add an IP camera. I need a string. Okay, so where do I find the string? And that's where the other bit of software comes into play. I'm just going to minimize that real quick and we'll install this one over here. What I'm really after though is after a little camera that I have not seen yet. It's this little guy over here. So this little camera is currently not plugged in. Let me plug it in real quick. It's a standard uh, USB powered camera, a little Ethernet. It's got Wi-Fi um, connectivity to the network. And uh, I'll just connect it real quick. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it up over there right next to my, uh, my, my ring light. And uh, just hold on, we'll, we'll get there in a moment. Very good, so I have actually powered up my little camera and I'll just show you that uh, my camera is actually in use uh, on my mobile device right over here. Uh, and uh, it's got PTZ capabilities and so on. I'll just, uh, it's got a bit of latency at the moment. It's not the fastest camera. It is a toy, essentially it's a toy, but it is a toy with PTZ. Uh, and of course it, it reports as HD. And uh, you'll see over there a bit of latency before it picks up the fact that the uh, the camera's a bit slow and all. Well, that's cool. Okay, never mind. So we've got the camera connected to an app. That's all very good. I'm just going to refresh over here to see it. And you would have seen it pick up over there as this one over here. And if I click on live video, you're going to see the video feed from the camera on the screen. There we go, that's me. And you're gonna see a bit of latency over there. That's okay. What we're really after, we're after the string over here, right? Now in this instance, I don't have anything set on here. There's no um, password, username, that kind of stuff. Now that I've got my RTSP string over there, which I'm going to copy, I can now close this app. I don't need to have this app open anymore. And I'm just gonna open up split cam again. There it is. I'll go and add my uh, IP camera, and now I can paste my uh, details over there. Of course, um, that's the port over which the RTSP is being streamed. I'll go add. It'll connect real quick, hopefully real quick. We shall see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the PTZ uh, components here on my app control to show you that I am actually using the um, the little camera over there. I might just turn off the audio here as well because as you can see I'm getting audio from the camera because the camera's got a built-in microphone. I'll just turn that off as well and uh, uh, here we go. Here's the PTZ control. I'm gonna pan to the one side. There we go. Pan to the other side back again and uh, 
Right, and there you go. I've added that. Now, what's interesting is you can continue to add to this, right? So perhaps I'll go back to my... Um, Maybe I'll go back to my Onvif device manager and let's see, let's grab the RTSP stream for my uh, my pool, hopefully. See how that goes, eh? Let's see, and I can add it as, as layers. And like I said before, this is what I really like about this um, split cam application. As you can see there, there's the pool and it doesn't look like much going on. You'll see the time is moving over there and I can move uh, these up and down. I can take this one over here. I can resize. Well, no, sorry, I missed that. Resize it over there and have picture in picture and all this kind of interesting stuff. So here we can see. Yeah, uh, there we go. Let's push them that way around. And then I've got to reset that real quick. I can move this over here. And there you can see I got both video feeds at the same time. Now, that's interesting in itself. I mean, I can continue to add different aspects to this like, and I can display or remove things. Now, this has changed on the fly real time. I'm just going to bring up Teams real quick so you can see what's happening in Teams. I might just go in here to my settings and uh, I'll go to devices and what we're going to see is my video there it is split cam video driver is what I'm using at the moment and that's it over there so if I were to come in here and make something go away you'll see that it's it's instant um, in, in fact <laughs> if I, I I could add a different scene and in scene two by the way now I can rename scene scene one um, this is a uh, proof of concept yeah why not and here's my second one and maybe just maybe I want to add a, a web camera which could be my Logi uh, Brio but I'm using that to record right now so that's not there and I can I can crank that up as well what kind of resolution do I want that sort of stuff I've got some other virtual cameras as well like I said the reason why I like this is it's very lightweight it's not very complex and it's pretty easy to do and that's what makes this such a powerful option. As I go from scene one to scene two, I have these different sort of setups. Thank you for watching. Hope you found that useful. Let me know how you go, what creative things you think of. Just imagine all the different scenarios you could dream up.